Be a giver. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20 verse 35 Many people only want to receive and never give. God himself is a giver. He created the world and then gave the dominion to mankind. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for our sins. John 3 verse 16 God always gives. It is who he is. Let us be like our Father God. There is a book of remembrance in heaven where records are kept. Paul tells the church of Macedonia about giving and receiving in Philippians 4 verse 15. This phrase, giving and receiving, is an old banking term used by the Jews for trading and commerce. The allusion here is to the keeping of account by men in business, by debtor and creditor. In the book they will put down in one column what is delivered out, and in the other column what is received, whereby accounts are kept clear. Paul is letting them know that God is a businessman and a fair God. If one only receives, the heavenly accounts are not balanced. One has not made any deposit in heaven. It will be unfair of a just God to give the same manifestation of the blessing to the one who has not been making any deposit with the one who has been doing so. God will be violating his own word for righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Psalm 89 verse 14 If the foundations of our faith in God are destroyed, what can the righteous man do? Psalm 11 verse 3 that is why Paul will tell the Galatians, Do not be deceived. Whatever a person sows, that he will reap. For God is not mocked. Galatians 6 verse 7 Basically, we determine the level of the manifestation of the blessing in our life. God is not to be blamed. If one deposits nothing in the heavenly account, then he should not be blaming God. But God is a good God. Mercy and truth go before his face. He will have mercy and still feed that person, for he is his child. Psalm 89 verse 14 The prophet Malachi had the same revelation of God about the book of remembrance. He said the book of remembrance was written before the Lord, for those who fear the Lord and who meditate on his name. Malachi 3 verse 16 One day God will open that book and bring to pass the manifestations of the blessing of Abraham in each one of us according to what we have sown. We give out of a heart of gratitude, for truly we cannot buy anything from the Lord. We cannot buy any manifestation of his blessing in our life. Our prosperity is by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. As we have seen in the perfect redemption plan of God, Christ died for us to receive every aspect of the salvation package. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 even though we give out of gratitude and honor, yet it is good that our heart should be established with grace. Hebrews 13 verse 9 The only strong reasoning we have for our prosperity is that Jesus paid for it in full by his death, burial and resurrection. Please read the series of the Perfect Redemption Plan and see your giving as a sign of gratitude and honor to your God. But let your heart be established in the area of prosperity by the grace of God who gave his son Jesus to ransom you in full by his death, burial and resurrection. And put your faith for your prosperity in that finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the one who received the nails through his hands, so that whatever you lay your hands to shall prosper. Jesus is the one who received the nails through his feet, so that every place the soles of your feet shall tread, God will give it to you. Jesus is the one who received the crown of thorns on his head and prayed in agony, so that the drops of sweat on his brow were drops of blood, so that the curse pronounced over the ground at the fall of mankind will not apply to you any more. 
You will no longer eat by the sweat of your brow, but tend and keep the garden of the Lord. The ground will no longer yield thorns and thistles for you. Jesus was the one who was pierced with a spear in his side, and water and blood came out of his body to the last drop, so that your sins can be washed away and make you as white as snow by his blood. Then your mind is renewed and your life is transformed by the washing of the water by the word of God. Jesus' flesh was the veil that separated you from the presence of God into the Holy of Holies. When he was pierced with a spear, the veil in the temple was torn in two, so that you and I, who have believed in him, can enter in. For in Christ are found all the blessings of God, including the blessing of Abraham, and we can stand in the very presence of God. No flesh can glory in the presence of God. You cannot glory for your giving in the presence of God. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 29 Then where is the boasting about our giving? It is excluded. Through what law? Of works? No, but through the law of faith in the finished work of Jesus at Calvary. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ without the works of the law. Any work we do, including our giving, is a sign of gratitude and honor to our God for ransoming us in full. Romans 3, 27-28 Chapter 10, 5b Give acceptably Genesis 4, verse 3 to 5. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Many people think because they just drop money in the offering that God has accepted it. It is the person of Abel that was accepted first before his offering. For instance, if a person has stolen the money or received a bribe and he wants to pay his tithe from that money, God does not receive it. Man does, but not God. If a husband is dealing treacherously with the wife of his youth and brings his tithe and offering, God does not receive it, though man does receive it. Malachi 2, 13-16 David committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdered her husband. The Lord had no respect unto the person of David and to his offering. David acknowledged it and said, Psalm 51, verse 16, For you do not desire sacrifice, else would I give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, these you will not despise. David had to repent first for his person to be accepted and his offering likewise. Chapter 10, 5c. Give generously. Luke six thirty eight. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Proverbs 11.24 There is one who scatters and yet increases, and there is one who withholds more than is meat, but it tends to poverty. Proverbs 11.25 The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he who waters shall be watered also himself. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6-13 but this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. 
And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, He has dispersed abroad, He has given to the poor, His righteousness remains for ever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of the service not only supplies the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them, and unto all men. Galatians 6 verse 7 Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6 verse 9 And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. Chapter 10, 5d Give willingly Exodus 35 5 Take from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Exodus 35.21 And they came, every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. Exodus 35.29 The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman, whose heart made them willing to bring, for all manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. 1 Chronicles 29, 6-9 Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel, and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, offered willingly, and gave for the service of the house of God of gold, five thousand talents and ten thousand drams, and of silver ten thousand talents, and of brass eighteen thousand talents, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord, by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly, because with a perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy, both for the building of the tabernacle of meeting by Moses, or for the building of the temple, Moses and David asked the people to give willingly. People actually rejoice when they give willingly, because it is with a perfect heart that they have offered that willing offering to the Lord. Let no one force you or coerce you to give something that you are not comfortable to give. Let it come from your heart, not from the people who are putting pressure on you. Chapter 10, 5e Give cheerfully 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Many times the reasons why people are not cheerfully giving to God are because either they feel that they are being forced, or they think God is after their money. If we flee from all the financial manipulations, we will be giving cheerfully most of the time. Chapter 10, 5, F. Give Sacrificially Sometimes giving sacrificially is also twisted in some religious settings. It is between you and God. Nobody else is in the confidentiality of that sacrificial giving. It has nothing to do with the amount of money, but the percentage God is asking the person to give. I said, 
God is asking you to give, not man. God must tell you or lay it on your heart to do that, even if a so-called minister of God comes to you and asks you to give him something sacrificially. If God did not speak to you, let the person know that you will go and pray about it and come back to him with what God instructs you. But if that minister does not allow you to ask God about it, straight away say no. People will say, but... What if the man of God truly heard from the Lord to ask me for that money, and I said no to him? Have I not sinned against God? I told you to tell that man of God you will pray about it and come back to him with what God says to you. The only reason you had to say no straight away is because he was not allowing you to ask God for yourself. Jesus told us, What do you think? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said unto him, The first. Matthew twenty one twenty eight to 31 So you see, Jesus himself gives you the opportunity to change your mind, even after you've said no. So if you went to God and prayed about it, and God told you to give that man of God that money, then go and see that man of God and tell him, I apologize for the delay in obeying the voice of God. God has also confirmed it to me, so here is the money. You have done the will of God according to Jesus in Matthew twenty one twenty eight to 31 That man of God might be angry with you, but you have just obeyed the word of God. Now if someone needs five pounds or ten pounds, and you have more than a thousand in your savings, you do not need to go and pray for that. Mark twelve forty one to 44 and Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples, and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more in than all those who have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. People were moved by the amount of money those rich people were putting into the treasury, but God was not. He knew what percentage they put in. Let us say, God gives a rich man an income or increase of a million pounds, and he comes and he puts a thousand pounds into the treasury of the church. People will be clapping for him, but the truth is, he has only given 0.1%, not even 1% of what God gave him. But this poor widow had only two pennies and she gave it, she gave a hundred percent. God was moved by her sacrificial giving. That is why we should never compare our giving with other believers. God knows who has given the greatest percentage and who has been deceiving people, but God was not deceived. 2 Corinthians 8, 1-4 Moreover, brethren, we made known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For I bear them witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. The Macedonian church was not a rich church, they were a poor church. But God used them to meet the needs of the ministry of Paul. Wherever Paul went, they sent aid, not just for Paul, but for the other saints too. 
They gave beyond their ability. No one asked them to do that, not even Paul. They did it of their own free will. Paul, looking at their deep poverty, and did not want to take their money, but they implored the apostle to take their money because they understood that the way to get out of poverty is to give. And sometimes, when God moves upon our heart and asks us to give sacrificially, it is because he wants to get us out of our deep poverty. Paul prays a powerful prayer over that Macedonian church who freely and willingly gave sacrificially. My God shall supply all your need, employment, business, demand, want, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4 verse 19 Now you realize that Paul prayed that God would supply all their needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, not according to the giving of the people, though they had been faithful in their giving, even sacrificial giving. Why? Because if God prospers us according to our giving, then, though we ought to be faithful in our giving out of our heart of gratitude and honor, we will limit the Holy One of Israel. The truth is, when you are a son of God, all things that God has are yours. The father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. Luke 15 verse 31 so if you truly based what you get from God on your giving, you will limit what God can do in your life. God wants to channel the manifestations of his many blessings through you as you put in. You receive them by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. We see the same example with the widow of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17. She gave sacrificially to Elijah. God said to Elijah, Rise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain you. 1 Kings 17 verse 9 We clearly see that God said he had commanded that widow to provide for Elijah. So when Elijah came to her, she already knew what God had commanded her. God must speak to your heart first before giving that sacrificial offering. And we see the results of her sacrificial giving. Though she was in deep poverty and was about to eat her last meal with her son and die, as she obeyed God and gave sacrificially, the Lord said through Elijah, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. 1 Kings 17.14 Genesis 26.12-14 Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Isaac was facing a famine in that land, yet he sowed. It can be likened to a sacrificial sowing or sacrificial giving. For he could have eaten those seeds, but he decided to sow them, and he reaped a hundredfold, and waxed great, and became very great. Psalm 126, 4 and 5 Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Sometimes, when God asks us to sacrificially give, we give it in tears like a widow, for it is our last meal or our livelihood that we put into that treasury. But God says we will reap in joy whatever financial captivity we were in, the Lord will bring us out of it. 1 Kings 3 from verse 3 to 5 And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was a great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar.
In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. 1 Kings 3.13 And I, the Lord, have also given you that which you have not asked, both riches and honour, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto you all your days. Many times people think it is only because Solomon asked for wisdom that God gave him riches and honour also. It is partly true. But Solomon also gave sacrificially, gave generously, gave willingly and gave cheerfully. When a king was anointed in those days, it took only one burnt offering and the pouring of oil on the head of the king. Samuel did it for Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and chapter 10. When Samuel anointed David as king, he also went to the house of Jesse and offered a sacrifice and then anointed David in 1 Samuel 16. But here we see Solomon, instead of just giving one offering, he gave a thousand burnt offerings. He knew that God needed just one offering, but he gave sacrificially, willingly, generously and cheerfully a thousand burnt offerings. It deeply moved God. God appeared to him and told him to ask anything he wanted. Though Solomon only asked for wisdom, but God also gave him both riches and honour. Note here, nobody put that idea into Solomon's head. He simply loved the Lord. God is after our heart. He said he loves a cheerful giver. Saul and David were also kings in Israel. They could have given hundreds of of offerings to the Lord, but they did not. Solomon did it from his heart because he simply loved God. All the priests of the temple must have informed him that God only requires one burnt offering for your anointing as king. He gave it from his heart. Sacrificial giving breaks the back of poverty and prospers the people of God. I said, God loves a cheerful giver. Many times we think that if God needs to support his ministry, he will use rich people. Yes, sometimes, but not always. Some rich people, when God asks them to give, are grumpy and they grumble, murmur with discontent. They think they are doing God a favor. God will just bypass them and instruct a poor person or a poor church because he wants to make them rich to help carry out his plan on earth. Jesus tells us, Luke four twenty five and 26. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, except unto Zarephath, a city of Sidon, unto a woman who was a widow. That widow was willing. She was not even a Jew, but a Gentile, not in the covenant of Israel. God spoke to her and she believed God, and God prospered her in the midst of the famine. While other Israelites were starving to death, this Gentile widow was enjoying prosperity in the midst of famine. That widow could never be proud, because she knew her prosperity came from God. The church of Corinth was richer than the church of Macedonia, but their attitude to giving was not right. In their hearts they thought that Paul was after their money when he came to them. Therefore Paul, whenever he went there, never took anything from them. 1 Corinthians nine fourteen and 15 Even so has the Lord ordained that those who preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I, Paul, have used none of these things when I was among you Corinthians. Neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For it would be better for me to die, than that any man should make my glorying or boasting void. Paul was teaching the churches about giving and receiving, not because he wanted these things to be done to him, but because he wanted the people of God to prosper. But this Corinthian church did not believe Paul. They thought he was after their money. So he kept teaching them the word of God and took nothing from them. 
He would rather die than allow the Corinthian church to boast about the ministry of Paul. Some church members, if they give you money, they will always remind you that 10 years ago they gave you £30 and your life or ministry would not be where it is without their £30. From such church members who think like the Corinthians, they want to take the glory in your life or ministry. Paul refused to take anything from them, lest they should take the glory or boast. Paul did not say to the Corinthian church that they were cursed because they did not give their tithes and offerings, and Paul did not tell them that they were going to hell because they did not give their tithes and offerings. Let no one put fear in your heart. Paul is only boasting in the power of God that it is God who gave him what he had. Though God can use humans, but the eyes of Paul were on God. His boasting and glorying was in God. For Paul said, But God forbid that I, Paul, should glory or boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Galatians 6 verse 14 Brethren, let us learn from Paul. Do not receive from people who will want to share the glory with God, who will yoke you your entire life because they gave you £30 ten years ago. Your God will provide for you. He has genuine people who will give to you from their heart, like the widow of Zarephath for Elijah or the Macedonian brethren for Paul. 2 Corinthians 11, 7 and 8 have I, Paul, committed an offence in abasing myself, that you might be exalted, because I have preached to you the gospel of God free of charge? I robbed other churches, taking wages from them to minister to you. When Paul said he had robbed other churches, it was a hyperbolical speech. He simply meant other churches, such as the Macedonian churches, gave for his ministry and he used their gifts to be ministering to those Corinthians. It was not fair on the other churches, for all churches were supposed to be giving. It was not fair that the other churches should be burdened by being the sole contributor of the ministry of Christ Jesus, entrusted to Paul and the Corinthians, who were also enjoying the ministry of Christ Jesus, entrusted to Paul, should be eased. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 13 2 Corinthians 11 verse 9 And when I was present with you, and in need, I was a burden to no man, for that which was lacking to me the brethren who came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. Philippians four, twelve to 13 I, Paul, know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I, Paul, can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Corinthians 12, 14 Behold, now for the third time I, Paul, am ready to come to you, Corinthians, and I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. In other words, I am not after your possessions and what you have or do not have, but I am after your spirit, soul, and body, that you be born again in your spirit, that your mind, which is part of your soul, be renewed to the word of God, so that you are no longer conformed to this perishing world, but transformed, and that you present your body holy unto God, and be made perfectly whole and perfectly sound in your body, from all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. Let us become the Macedonian church, not the Corinthian church. God is a just God. He sees our heart before anything else. It is the person of Abel that was accepted before his gift. God respected the Macedonian church and their offering like he did Abel, and Paul testified of it. 
He said, But I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, Macedonians, a sweet-smelling aroma, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Philippians 4 verse 18 Let me tell you one of my stories. I still remember it as if it were yesterday. We were getting close to the Christmas period, and one morning when I was praying, I heard a voice telling me to buy gifts for all the children in the church. My response was straight, Get behind me, Satan! I forgot about the thing and the next day I had a dream, and in the dream I was told to buy a gift for all the children of the church. I said, Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. And then I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, Son, you cannot bind me. It is I and you know my voice. I said to the Lord, Lord, I have already given you my tithe and my offering for this month. Why are you asking me for more? I said, Look, Jesus, you have many children who have more money than I. Why don't you go and ask them? Besides, you know that I have just enough for myself. This is Christmas money from my parents sent to me to enjoy that season. It is not your money, Lord. It is my money. If you give me some money, then I will give it to you. But this money, no way, it's mine. I think I argued a lot with God that day, and I did not obey Him. The next day, in the morning as I woke up, the Lord gave me a scripture to read, John 6. As I read it, I was in tears. The Lord told me, You see, son, the lad that had five loaves of barley bread and the two little fish gave it to Jesus, and with that Jesus fed thousands of people. The parents of the lad had prepared that nice lunch pack for him. It was just enough for him. The barley bread was the bread that poor people used to eat, since they could not afford wheat bread. But that lad gave the five loaves of barley bread that everybody might have despised, and Jesus fed the whole multitude with that little lunch pack. I jumped out of my bed and I ran to the supermarket and bought gifts for all the children in the church. It was a small gift, insignificant gift. People might even have despised my gift because of its smallness. As far as God was concerned, I had given him my five loaves of barley bread and my two fish. I came home rejoicing. I had no money left, but I was joyful. The next morning as I woke up, the Lord spoke to me and gave me the scripture in Genesis 4.4. 4. The Lord was telling me he had respect for my person and my offering like he did Abel. I cannot explain how joyful I was that day. Tears ran down my cheeks, tears of joy, the joy of knowing that my Father in heaven thought of me in that way. Yes, it was a sacrificial offering. No one asked me to do it but God. People in that church did not know from whom the insignificant gifts came.